the stories of mahabharata retold by shudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the mahabharata in the last episode we heard about how dushashana and duryodhana wanted to kill bhima by poisoning him but they failed bhima came back with renewed power and renewed strength we also learned that bhishma was looking for a teacher a teacher for the pandavas and the kauravas who could train them in the advanced skills of using arms and weaponry One day the Pandava and Kaurava brothers were playing with a wooden ball in a meadow not far from the royal palace Suddenly the ball rolled into a deep and unused well It was dark inside and the boys could hardly see the ball They were all quite depressed to lose the ball and kept blaming each other for this loss Suddenly a Brahmin appeared in tattered clothes He saw the quarreling boys and laughed at them. Aren't you the Kuru princes? You can't even pick up a ball from a well? What kind of arms training did you get from your guru? He said. One of the brothers said, Sir, do you see how deep the well is? And what does our arms training got to do with it? The Brahmin said, Well, if you knew how to use your bows and arrows, you could have picked up the ball quite easily. Then he said, took off a ring from his finger and dropped it into the well and said here not only can i pick up the ball i can also pick up this ring with my bow and arrow do you want me to show you how yudhishthira said yes yes sir please do and we'll give you whatever you want the brahmin said all i want is a good meal yudhishthira said sir if you can do what you said then not only a meal we will arrange for a permanent livelihood for you in the palace of hastinapur the brahmin smiled and said fine he looked at the tall grass field around and told the boys go get me some reeds from those grasses the boys ran to get the reeds the brahmin took them and with a knife he sharpened one end of each reed then he stood next to the well concentrated for a while and then shot a reed down into the well the reed pierced the top of the floating ball but kept perfectly balanced and vertical he then took another reed and shot it exactly the same as before but this reed hit the rear end of the first one and stuck there one after another the brahmin shot the reeds and they stuck to each other and formed a long chain which soon reached the top of the well he then gently pulled the chain of reeds and retrieved the ball from the well the boys applauded and cried out in joy the brahmin said wait i still have to recover my ring he then looked at arjuna and said give me your bow and arrow arjuna gave him his bow and arrow the brahmin engaged an arrow to the bow aimed down the well chanted a few mantras and released the arrow the arrow went straight in and magically it came up to him with the ring attached to its tip the boys were awed to say the least yudhishthira said sir who are you you just cannot be a simple brahmin the brahmin laughed and said i am drona the son of rishi bharadwaja go and tell your grand uncle bhishma and tell him about me i am sure he knows me some of the boys ran to the palace and informed bhishma of the incident bhishma knew immediately that the teacher he was looking for has himself arrived at his door he knew of drona quite well for drona to received his arms training from parashuram who was also bhishma's teacher besides the fame of drona as one of the most skilled warriors had reached his ears through his spies and informers bishma came out to the meadow and welcomed drona with open arms 
Drona, we are indeed honored to have you here at Hastinapur. I would like to offer you the position of the Royal Arms Teacher of Hastinapur and you can have whatever honorarium you would like for your services. Please, please accept and honor us. Drona had no reason to reject the offer. It was for this very reason he had come to Hastinapur. Although he was a great teacher and a great warrior, but as a Brahmin, it was very difficult for him to earn a livelihood from his skills in weaponry. In fact, he was extremely poor and was desperate to find a job that would not only pay him well, but also give him the respect and honor he deserved. But he also had another ulterior motive of which we will learn later. Drona settled down in Hastinapur Palace with his wife and son Ashwatthwama and started his job of training the Pandavas and Kaurava brothers in the advanced art of warfare and weaponry. Although he taught the princes the use of multiple weapons, he also decided to focus each one on a special weapon. For example, Yudhishthira focused on the use of the spear, Bhima on the mace, Arjuna focused on archery, and Nakul and Sahadeva on the sword. Duryodhana also picked up the mace as his weapon of choice. Drona's teaching style was a bit unorthodox, and he often tested his students for their focus, concentration and skills. One day, he built a small wooden bird and placed it on a distant branch of a tree. He then called the princess and challenged them to hit the bird's eye using their skills with bows and arrows. First, he called Yudhishthira and asked him to aim for the target. As Yudhishthira was ready to shoot, Drona asked, What do you see, Yudhishthir? Yudhishthira was puzzled. He said, Well, I see the meadow, I see you, I see my brothers, I see the tree, I see the bird. Drona stopped him and said, Put down your bow, you don't have to shoot. He called Duryodhana next. And as Duryodhana aimed, he asked him the same question. What do you see? Duryodhana said, I see the tree, I see the trees behind the trees, I see you, I see... Drona said, All right, put down your bow. One by one he called upon each of the princes to aim and ask the same question. And they all answered the same. They see the tree, the bird, the meadow, the brothers, etc., etc. And he didn't let anyone shoot the arrow. Finally, Arjuna came up to the spot. He engaged the arrow and aimed at the bird. Drona asked the same question. Arjuna, what do you see? Arjuna kept quiet for a moment, still focusing on the target, and then replied, I see the eye. Drona asked, are you sure? What else do you see? Arjuna replied again, I only see the eye of the bird. Drona smiled and said, shoot. Arjuna released the arrow and it went straight and pierced the eye of the wooden bird. Drona was very happy. He embraced Arjuna and said to all his pupils, you see, this is what your concentration should be. When you aim at a target, that's the only thing you are supposed to concentrate on, nothing else. He turned to Arjuna and said, Arjuna, keep practicing like this and I will make you the greatest archer of all. In fact, Arjuna was never tired of practicing. He practiced his archery skills tirelessly from dawn to dusk. One evening, when he was having his dinner, the lamp in the room went out in a gust of wind and the dining room was pitch dark. But Arjuna realized that he was still able to eat his food. In the darkness, he could pick up the food from the plate and take it to his mouth without any effort at all. He thought if he practiced properly, he could shoot his target even in the dark. Then on, he started to practice during the night and soon became skilled in hitting his target in total darkness. One day, while Drona was teaching archery to his royal students, the Kuru brothers, a young boy walked in. 
from his looks and his costume it was quite evident that the boy was of tribal origin a nishad he was crying a crude bow made of bamboo and some arrows with him the boy walked up to drona and kneeled down in front of him to pay his respects and said gurudev i am a kalavya i long to become a great archer and have always wanted to learn the skills from you please take me in as your student and teach me the art of archery drona raised his hand to bless him and said i am happy to know that you want to learn the art of archery from me but i can only accept students of royal origin do you come of royal heritage ikalavya put his head down and said no sir i am only a tribal a nishad i live in the forest drona said then i am sorry ikalavya i cannot teach you please go back ikalavya slowly walked away while the kuru princess laughed at him from behind drona scolded them stop it get back to your practice few months later drona took his students on a hunting trip to the forests the royal entourage consisted of huge team of servants guards cooks cattle and also a few hunting dogs they set up camp in the forest and drona started to train them in forest warfare in between hunting trips one day one of the dogs of the camp went astray deep into the forest strolling through the forest the dog came to an opening where stood a small hut and in front of the hut stood a clay statue of drona in front of the statue a young boy was busy practicing his archery skills it was ekalavya he looked quite fierce in his leopard skin loin cloth and tribal jewelry and body paintings the dog started to bark at ekalavya ekalavya was feeling very annoyed and disturbed by his incessant barking he tried to shoo away the dog couple of times but the dog refused to leave and continued to bark at ekalavya ekalavya got impatient he shot seven arrows inside the dog's mouth and stopped the dog from barking without hurting him the dog ran away and came back to the kuru camp when drona and his students saw the dog they were surprised to say the least shutting off a dog this way could only be done by someone who's extremely skilled even arjuna couldn't pull off such a feat they all followed the dog to ekalavya's hut and was even more surprised to see the clay statue of drona soon ekalavya came out of his hut and was overjoyed to see drona he kneeled down at his feet and paid his respects drona asked ekalavya what are you doing with my statue ekalavya said gurudev i was not fortunate enough to have you as my teacher in person but i have always considered you as my teacher my guru so i made this statue of yours and have been practicing archery in front of you to perfect my skills drona was kind of happy in fact he felt quite elated to see that he had a very talented student whom he never taught in person but he noticed that arjuna looked quite depressed drona pulled arjuna to one side and asked what's the matter arjuna why are you depressed anything wrong arjuna said nothing's wrong gurudev it's only that you had promised that i only would be your best student of archery no other student of yours could surpass me but i guess that's not true anymore drona understood that it would be a strategic mistake to let ekalavya surpass his favorite student arjuna he came back to ekalavya and said well ekalavya if you consider me to be your guru then you must pay me your guru dakshina my fees ekalavya said guru i'll be honored to pay you my dakshina if it is in my power to do so please please let me know what can i offer you drona hesitated for a moment watched at arjuna standing next